Okay, so going to give you a little demonstration of some Hickok meters. Currently working on a 533A and a 600A. The first thing I do when I before I start any work on them is check the meters. These are both taken apart and clean, check the resistance. And this one is from the 600A and I'm going to put check the line. So here's the line on the 600A. Okay, without making any changes, I'm going to do it for the 533A meter. And here's going to be the difference. Without changing anything, here's what happens when I put the same current that set the line on the 600A meter. And I got something hooked up wrong. Yep. Got a lot of wires running over here, so. All right, there's the same current. So this should be at the line and it's not. It's pretty far off. So here is 500 microamperes. I'm doing this because this is an unusual meter for the Hickok. 500 microamperes, which should bring this meter to full scale. And Get the right wires again. It does perfectly. This is very unusual that I find a nice Hickok meter that reads at full scale with the correct microampers applied to it. Beautiful at full scale, right on the money. Now here's the other meter from the 533A. 500 microampers applied way off. Matter of fact, I did some checking and I put this at full scale. It takes 666 microampers to bring this to full scale. Someone's been in this meter. When I took it apart and cleaned it and checked it, the uh, coil resistor in there isn't held on by anything. It's supposed to be a screw. Someone sort of reworked this, maybe trying to fix it. I don't know. But there is 500 microampers. So no matter what you do with this, to set the line, to check tubes, this meter is not going to work. I did put a new case on top of it so it looks nice and new, although I'm not going to be able to use this meter. I'm going to build a different one, which I've already done. And it's very unusual that I find a nice, clean Hickok meter that tests correct at full scale like this one does, that came off the 600A, which I haven't decided whether to use this one on the 600A to the 533A and where I'm going to put the new meter I made for either one of those testers. Look at that, 500 microampers, that is right on the money. Bounces around quite a bit, but that's the nature of these Hickok meters. Good working meter, this one looks nicer. The scales cleaner it's not yellow like this one I'm not going to make any changes though this one uh, is clean to status size this one's clean to status size and uh, big difference in the meters so let me pause this okay so let's see so at 500 microampers you're supposed to test at 233 ohms So let's go to the one from the 533A. Two hundred thirty-three ohms, perfect. So there's nothing wrong with that. Although the meter just isn't working right. And let's go with the one from the 600A.
So the 600A tests at... Two thirty four, about two hundred thirty four ohms. It's supposed to be two thirty three, an ohm or two is going to make much difference on these meters. This is a really nice functioning meter. And if you notice where the meter is, or the pointer on this, so on the fifteen on the three thousand scale, it is twelve hundred. Let's see where. It, registered on the other meter. It's one of the 500 microampers meters. You can actually just hook this up rather than a digital one. And we are at 950. Let me see, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 950. big difference between the meters. That's why I usually change all the Hickok meters because even you know I've had some that are worse than this. All this is a good working meter has the right resistance. It's not a, it's not going to work on the no matter what you do to set the line you'd have to bring the, the voltage up so high to set the line to get the meter to come up right that it'd almost be impossible to calibrate. So I assume that's why they took this meter apart and someone was in there and they weren't able to fix the problem. And the problem wasn't in the tube tester, it's in the meter itself. As are a lot of problems with the Hickok tube testers. These meters are 60 years old. I think this tube tester was made in uh, 55. This one's, I can't remember what this one. So they're 65 years old. And, but this one still functions really nice. And this particular meter, I, I know you can't see inside of it, these particular meters are different styles. Although this meter I've had bad luck with in the past. And I've had better luck with these meters in the past. But this one is right on the money. Okay, so here's the meter I made to replace this meter. This is a triplet 420. G. And I, we're going to test it at 500 microampers. Very nice, smooth, slow movement, right on the money, 500 microampers. And we'll show you on the other one again. 600 a meter 500 microampers but you see that wild swing and the bouncing around that's what's bad about these meters they bounce all over the place very rarely do I get a nice smooth meter without the bounce again I'll show you how the other one reacts oh, hooked it up backwards <laughs> 500 microampers. No wild bouncing. Right on the money, too. Very smooth functioning pointer. No banging around the ends. So let's check the ohmage on this. I know it's probably going to be one or two more than it should be, but as close as I can get with the resistors I had. It is 236. So it's about 3 ohms more, which isn't a big deal. And it comes up to not quite as high as this one. It comes up to about, uh, let's see, that's at 1300. Let's check this one's at around a little bit over 1300, between 1300 and 1400. Let's see, what's those are five? That's one, two, that's one. So that's about 1150. Over 1150, a little bit over 1150. Let's see where it comes up on uh, 
I believe this came up at 1200. I've got something up that wrong here on this. That one. This is right. This one it comes right up to 1200. So this one's a little bit more sensitive than this one. It's unusual. It's over 1150. I'd say that's like uh, maybe 1175. It's right in the middle between the lines. But I would definitely defer to this meter, which is exactly 500 microamperes. It's 3 ohms more. But this one was over on ohmage too. This is 236. Was this one again? Two thirty four. So there are two ohm difference. Is that making the difference? I don't know. Two ohms is going to make a difference, I guess. But this is going to be far more accurate than this meter. And I still have a lot of questions about this one. Although it's an accurate meter, it reads 500 microampers, 234 ohms. This is a very nice, smooth moving meter. It's a new old stock. And uh, it's beautiful as compared to this one, is a beautiful meter too. Put a new lens on it. It's clean, it's data size. Look at that bounce in that. All right, just a short demonstration of uh, why most Hickok meters are going to need to be changed. And the unusual one, when you find one that's almost perfect 500 microampers full scale, 234 ohms, ohm more. This one has two ohms, three ohms more. And you can see the size difference, which is not a big deal. As far as reading the meter, it makes no difference at all. This is a beautiful meter. This is a beautiful meter, too. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm going to put this on the 600A or the 533A. I know it'll look nice in that 600A, but it'll look nice in either one of the tube testers. One of them's going to have to be cut, though. Maybe, uh, hmm, I don't know. I'll figure it out later.